Dave here and this is episode 20 of the art review series and this time we are going to take a look at the work of Yang Qi. Now Yang Qi is obviously a concept artist and according to his uh, art station profile he is an art director, I'm not sure where. I first discovered Yang Qi in YouTube I believe. And it was, I believe, a recommended video of his. Until this day, he only has one video in his uh, channel. But it is probably one of the best concept art videos out there. And the reason why is uh, it, it, it's of this specific artwork piece. And as you can see, it's a pretty cool looking uh, concept. Uh, it's not overly rendered, it's kind of rendered in some areas, but for the most part, or for some of the parts, it's sort of left vague, and it does look like a very concept art type of uh, illustration. And if you check out the video on YouTube, I, I will link the, uh, the video link in the description. If you do check out the video, he does this all in the background layer, so essentially one layer, and he mostly uses like 99.9% .9 of the painting is done with a simple opacity circle brush. Opacity meaning it's not very opaque, it's uh, whenever you paint something with, or when, whenever you have a brush that is, that has some transfer or opacity, you're probably the type of painter or artist that builds up the painting uh, where where your strokes aren't are not necessarily opaque so you do have to kind of shade your strokes if you know what I mean and that's kind of his approach here and I do recommend you just watch the video and just uh, enjoy now it, it doesn't have a voiceover but just watching the time lapse of this beautiful thing is amazing and his sketch in the beginning is quite loose, as you can see. And then, again, one layer, as you can see right here, in the background layer. So he's kind of a Feng Zhu type of guy. And to me, it just it shows confidence, I think. And... Fuck. I, he does use a few brushes later on, but, but they're very minimal. He does have a few kind of noise texture brushes. But 99.9% uh, .9 of it is just uh, done with the uh, circle brush with some opacity. I mean, the way he builds up this painting, I mean, Christ, uh, the amount of time you can save by just painting on one layer and uh, just uh, simplifying your tool set to the to just the circle brush and maybe a few extra texture brushes. I think it, it just shows efficiency. And it's really more about the artist uh, compared to... Because sometimes we can get caught up in the software, in the tools. But this is this video, this piece right here is a great example of artistry, I think. So I do recommend you watch that video, download it, watch it from time to time and get inspired. And uh, whenever he does his illustrations or concepts, he does this thing where part of it is white and then he adds a nice backdrop with a, a simple backdrop to help the character pop out. And even here you can see he does use the circle brush a lot, but if he wants to, he can go in and render things out a little more. and. Uh, um, so I think it's it's, it's very interesting what you can achieve by just by just uh, pushing your sketch further and refining it more, because um, his concepts look very interesting. I mean, even the way he lights up his concepts, it looks very three dimensional. I think it's because of the gradients, the value changes that he has. Man, the subtle, subtle uh, light reflections here. You can see some blue. 
here you can see some slight uh like the value changes in terms of let's say this shaded area it's very it's very soft and not very hard edged and i think it does add a natural kind of looking visual and again look at the background he he leaves some white and then adds a simple painterly backdrop to help the uh, concepts pop out more Again, look at this concept right here. It looks very tight, but if you like uh, focus in, you can even see some of the the uh, the circle brush stuff. So he spends. Oh fuck! Look at that. Look at that. Again, he, if you zoom in, it looks very impressionistic, right? But. Look at the efficiency right here. The efficiency right here. Ba, 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 ba. And, uh, but if you zoom out, it looks very tight. So maybe the trick is to start very impressionistic and then zoom in once you're done with the general concept. And then from there, uh, 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 yeah, again, zoom in and then start painting and then it kind of helps to tighten up the painting. So, yeah. Although in the the initial piece we showed, the first one, he didn't zoom in as much. So I'm not sure how uh, he would approach these ones. You know what? Maybe he doesn't even zoom in because uh, I remember seeing, or if you check out Anthony Jones's work, or if you check out his YouTube channel, he can get some pretty rendered stuff without having to zoom in at all. So I think it's quite possible to not have to zoom in to make it tighter. I think it's okay or possible to be able to see the entire canvas and create a tight, tight work um, in that kind of zoomed out level. Again, simple backdrop and a very almost tight work. Now I do recommend you check out his art station because he has a lot of uh, concepts to offer. And oh, again, you can even see some of these strokes. But if you uh, compress this JPEG more, it would look tighter from afar. So I think this is some 3D. Oh, it's one of his. It's a project of his, I believe. Red tides. Check it out. Uh. More red tide storyboards. Again here. Now it does use a bit of texture. Right here you can see some noise. But it's um... His go-to is obviously the circle brush. Now this one is... Yeah, this one is the... The one that has some noise to it. And some gritty, gritty kind of teeth-like stuff. Kind of, it, it actually looks kind of paper-like to me if you add some noise to your brush. Um, so he did start out with a gray sketch. And in the first piece, he did start out with the simple line sketch, a very loose line sketch, and some gray values. And then from there, he'll, he'll just uh, slap on some color. So I, I think it's very interesting. Ah. <sighs> And he does a lot of characters. Um, he also does environments, but mostly characters and creatures. Um, I love the way he painted the clouds. Even though he, do he, he uh, does use the circle brush, sometimes he'll use a more opaque brush if we zoom in on this guy. Oh, it doesn't zoom. On, it doesn't zoom. It doesn't zoom as much. But uh, if you focus in, it's very almost. Uh, gouache like uh or oil it's very opaque and maybe he does use some mixer brush brushes sometimes mm, i can't verify that but it does look more opaque and natural very gouache like so he does vary up his brush use sometimes he'll use the circle brush sometimes he'll use more of these types of brushes where it's more opaque and more uh, kind of natural looking brushes, and even the back, 
even the backdrop is very brush like natural brush brush it ha it has <laughs> sorry it has a natural natural brush look to it and again he can go in and tighten up his work but uh I'm not sure how long he can paint or how long each one takes to paint. Uh, again, I love the way this kind of style where you add a simple backdrop and you're just painting it. Uh, and there's a nice gradient to it. It helps pop out the, uh, the, uh, the character even more. So these are some environments. And he, he, he's actually pretty good in photo bashing. Um, he blends it with the... He doesn't usually use the circle brush for his uh, photo bash stuff. He used... Or he uses the more opaque brushes to help blend it with the photos. And I think it fits more compared to the circle brush. Because the circle brush does have a smoothness to it. And it's not always appropriate for, say, uh, landscapes or natural looking things. Because... It's very, um, the texturedness of the natural brushes fits with the texturedness of the natural landscapes. So, I mean, there are no rules. I mean, you, you can blend things with the circle brush, but uh, here you can see he did use a rhino and then he painted over it. It, it looks so well blended, right? And again, that nice backdrop. Oof, more environments. And as you can see, he blends it very well. Uh, he's pretty good with the values. It's darker here and slightly lighter here. And then here, you can definitely tell that there's more contrast. So this is where your eye is led to first. Same thing goes here. The contrast is here in this sliver of uh, light. Ah. New scene, again, nice photo bashing. Look at that, that's a photo right there and then he blends it with some paint. Fuck. Um, it's, it's, oh, Jesus. It's pretty impressive the way he, uh, he can blend things. He can blend things with the, uh, with his normal brushwork plus the photos. Ah, so these are some of his line sketches. I mean, even his line sketches look very cool. And then more of this more opaque painterly concepts. So he's a great designer. Excuse me. A great designer, a great painter. Ah, oh, fuck. And his work just shows confidence and expertise. I mean, it's almost impossible to not like this guy. Um, so this is a f definitely some kind of rag photo that he uh, placed, but it looks so well placed, right? Uh, I love those brushes right here. Mm. The, the texturedness of it, the texturedness of it is just so befitting. Um, again, he does a lot of characters compared to environments. Um, wow. <laughs> and most of this subject matter is sort of uh, a a a Asian Asian themed. Like this is the type of work I would expect from, uh, you know, the East, you know, China specifically. And they have a lot of artists right there. You know, I'm only part Chinese, you know, like a quarter Chinese. But uh, <laughs> I think it's because of the uh, the population. I mean, there's just too many <laughs> of them, so you're like bound to. Uh, have like leagues or droves of artists and I, I can't remember the actual number but I, I believe China leads in the amount of engineers like they have so many uh, uh, graduates of engineering and fuck you know if you've ever seen those uh, I call them speed buildings where it takes only a, 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 like a week to build or to construct an entire building I mean, obviously they're pretty much prefabricated, but it's so freaking impressive. Anyway, 
Uh, again, he's using more of his opaque natural brushes here. Let's, can we zoom in? Oh, we can zoom in. Oh. Oof. Uh, so, I, uh, it looks really good, even if it's zoomed in. And, uh, again, I'm not sure uh, if he zooms in when he paints, but I, I do think it's possible to be able to create something that's very defined from a zoomed out uh, level. Oof, now this one is, I believe he did use the circle brush. You can see it even here. It's a, it's a bit smooth, you can tell. Uh, if, if it doesn't have as much texture, it is probably a circle brush. Um, look at the way he defines forms. Jesus. I mean, th this shield right here is... Fuck. <laughs> Again, I do recommend you uh, check out his work. And uh, I think it would definitely influence your standards of what makes a uh, very good design or illustration. Oh. Oh my god. Look at that. And I love his designs, his forms. Uh, it's, it's just magnifique, right? Ah, look at that texture. So this one is more of a gouache or oily type of brush. I mean, I do have a few of these, so I think I can, you know, try and uh, replicate or yeah replicate his kind of style i mean i could definitely try that uh, this this could be a photo right here maybe not sure but again you you wouldn't know because he does blend things very very well it's almost impossible to uh discern which is photo bashed and which is painted because he can paint really well um oh fuck Again, very nice backdrop to help pop out this character right here. Ah. <laughs> and yeah, he does a lot of character designs. It's very interesting. Um, this reminds me of a certain, um, it's kind of a 3D anime film where they were all wearing black or something. And then I saw this, but there was a character that had these sorts of eyes. Not sure what the name of the uh, the film was. Uh, just a 3D anime film, I would say. Um, so this one is actually probably some 3D work that he did or his studio did, perhaps. Mm hmm. Look at the way he paints the face. Ugh. I love how the brush works. The, the brush work gets simpler as you kind of move to the edges. Uh, look at that. And his human anatomy is pretty good. He can draw or paint knees very well. Hands, feet. Look at that feet. And his creature designs or slash character creature designs look very, very interesting. Um, I'm not sure how long Yankee has been has been doing this, but I would assume he is like decades, decades and just beyond, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure where I was going with that. So I, I think this is his last, um, he has more, uh, I didn't, uh, I started very close to his, uh, or I didn't explore his entire portfolio. So I do recommend you check out Yankee's work. Um, again, uh, it's very interesting. He has a lot, a lot of stuff. He has about 57,000 followers on ArtStation. And, uh, deservingly so. Because look at his car. Oh, look at this. Can we zoom in? Ah, oh, look at that. Circle brush. Oof. And the way he paints materials as well. Very, very interesting. So he's obviously more focused on character stuff or character designs and concepts. But uh, like we saw, he can do environments as well. And he's a pretty good photo basher. 
um, as well. <laughs> so uh, I, I hope you found a uh, a new artist to look up to, to study, to study, to uh, to be inspired by. And I do recommend that you follow him on ArtStation. And I also recommend that you subscribe to his YouTube channel just in case he posts something new. Um, and I do recommend you watch that. Uh, where is that? The uh, the this video uh, from time to time because you will get inspired, and the ease to which he paints is just fulfilling to the soul to the soul and uh, so yeah i hope you have a good day I, ho I hope you keep painting or you continue painting and uh stay free